When the AV Club travels, we always make time to visit pop culture landmarks. If something memorable happened in the world of film, TV, books, or music, we want to go there. We're not just tourists, we're pop pilgrims. The music that Kurt Cobain made with Nirvana, particularly 1991's genre-defining Nevermind, touched more people than the singer ever imagined it would. So it's no surprise that Nirvana fans make the trip to this bench, outside the suburban Seattle home where Cobain tragically took his own life in 1994, to pay tribute. What can you tell us about uh, where we're standing right now? This is a public space, right? Yeah, this is a city park, and it was a city park actually when Kurt bought the house, which was in January of 1994. People think of this house kind of as a shrine, but it's important to remember that Kurt lived here for approximately, you know, three and a half months. And what do you think was Kurt's motivation to buy a house like this in a neighborhood like this? Well, uh, Kurt was a man of contradictions. There were many things that just didn't make sense. You know, this is a beautiful house, and Kurt and Courtney liked old, gorgeous, kind of gothic-looking stuff. And he was most comfortable playing his guitar in a closet in the master bedroom, right? He, um, the house is huge, but Kurt not only played guitar in the closet, often he slept in the closet when he was there. I mean, one of the saddest stories with this house is that that was the time he was most struggling from with drugs, and Courtney and everyone was kind of telling him, you have to stop. So he occasionally would leave this beautiful multi-million dollar mansion and drive to a $14 a night hotel in a seedy area of Seattle so he could be by himself and caught up in his addiction. That says more about Kurt Cobain than looking at this piece of real estate. And what do you think of the actual park we're standing in as a memorial? Kurt was seen a few times sitting on this bench um, in the era that he lived there. There still is something about the idea of a kind of lonely park bench under a big tree that kind of does feel appropriate for the melancholy nature of his music. It was estimated that maybe 10,000 people visit during a year. His suicide is very troubling for people because I think the reason that these songs mean so much to people is that when people listen to them, they feel that Kurt is writing these songs to them. My heart is broke, my is blue. With that comes a relationship. People feel they knew him even when they didn't. So his death to some degree, many people feel is a personal betrayal. I think what people remember ultimately are those songs. And I think the impact of that has risen and the controversial way he lived his lifestyle is maybe forgotten about. Mm -hmm.